and welcome to the Dittenworks YouTube channel. Today is the concluding part or part four of the Tamberg video which I shared with Matt Casey of Haycross Audio. Postman Pat knocked on the door early this morning and I received my new retrofitted upgraded capacitors from Matt. I will put in the link his final video which is him working on these and what he's basically done very kindly for me is replaced all the capacitors and the resistors, reorientated the air inductors, removed the bolts through even though they weren't actually affecting it too bad, and upgraded the capacitor cap with a poly cap rather than the old owl cap. Now, there were some <laughs> interesting things with these crossovers. Both Matt and I agree that possibly the mid-range unit that, that Tambo chose to use in this might not have been their first choice because there's an awful lot of fudging around in the mid-range circuit to get that dialed in. So I'm not 100% sure what happened there. Maybe the driver they first chose to use was unavailable or, or what, who knows? They're from 1972. There's no way I can find out that information easily. Um, the first thing I'm gonna do today is remove the drive units and take out that horrible wadding. I'm going to replace it with these panels that I've cut out, which are going to line the back sides, tops of the cabinets. And then we're going to pack it out with the regular polyfill stuff, the white polyester filling. I've got a load of that, which I'm going to have to cut out and slowly layer that up until we've got pretty much the same density, if you like, of wadding. But it will just be much neater. That wadding that's in there, that fiberglass stuff, is so uneven that... It, I can't imagine that the sound waves travel through equally on both cabinets because they're not symmetrical. I'm gonna do my best to get them symmetrical. So first of all, I'll remove the drivers, get rid of that wadding, replace the new wadding, fit the crossovers, solder up all the new drivers, and we'll have a listen. I'll speak to you in a minute. Okay, many hours have elapsed. I've had a few problems putting these back together. So they are back together. Um, let's just discuss a few of the issues I had. So the the cabinet that had the blown tweeter and the damaged crossover that Matt identified, somebody had obviously had that apart before because these little brass, I don't know if we can focus on that, little brass collars which go through the cabinet for the binding post to attach to were cross-threaded. So I had to knock them out and fit new binding posts which are also brass, which go all the way through, through the crossover and bolted into place. That was the first problem, not a major issue. Second problem, I didn't have enough polyester wadding, so I had to blast up to the foam shop, which is just down the road from me, and he didn't have any either. Um, I had to scrabble around and find some that I did have and mix it with stuff he had. So I cut sheets out that fitted the dimensions of the stuff he had, which was quite thick. Then I managed to trim down the two sheets I had, which fitted in there. So we've got different reflectivity and absorbency going through the cabinet up to some quite stiff foam right at the back of the cabinet. So that's all done, glued into place, neatly done, and um, much, much better than the original stuff that was in there. That took a little bit of time to work that out and a little bit of trial and error. So I had to wire them all up, fit the base driver, play them, remove the base driver, take some wadding out until I thought I got it right. That then led me on to the <laughs> biggest problem. So as you know, these didn't have matched tweeters. I'd sourced a pair of tweeters for these. And when I went to solder them together, the little terminal popped straight through the face plate. It obviously been weakened or the glue had dried and that breaks the lead wire. Now that is something I could fix, but I didn't have enough time to do that today. So I went and got the other one and exactly the same thing happened. This one, I did manage to do a quick repair, which is literally just a small section of copper wire rejoining the lead wire up to the terminal and then carefully soldered it on. All of this was time consuming. Ultimately, got them all back together, rectified all the issues I had, tested them with that cheap stereo that I used in the first video and just played FM, getting, a, getting the static to check all the drive units are working, which they did. I'd already tried a multimeter on all the drive units anyway. I did experiment with initially using the T2600s from a pair of Ditton 44s, 
but I decided actually I would keep them original and put the original non-doped Tanberg, well, they're still Celestian, but designed for Tanberg 12 inch units. So I've got them all back together. I have had a listen and first, straight off the bat, what Matt has done to the crossovers, particularly putting a poly cap in the HF, has 100% cleaned up the HF. These have got really nice detail on the HF. I've played some vinyl and in all honesty, they are picking out nuances that even believe it or not, my Spendors don't, which is <clears throat> uncanny. However, if you play my Spendors louder, all of that detail is present. And if you play these a little bit too loud, they overbear the room. But that's no reflection on the crossover work. That's just the characteristics of my loudspeakers versus a very old pair of loudspeakers. So on the positive note, what Matt has done to the crossovers has 100% cleaned up the HF without a shadow of a doubt. Move down to that very complicated and frankly awful mid-range unit. That's also cleaned that right up. They are really actually quite nice in the mid-range. Move down to the lower registers and the bass. I can't actually remember exactly how the bass was in their old configuration, but the bass is very tight, pretty deep, and very punchy for a drive unit of that size. Pretty typical of a sealed enclosure with a 12 inch unit in them. They don't rumble down as low as something like Ditton 66 because they're in a smaller enclosure and don't have that passive bass radiator. But all in all, the musical presentation of these drive units is really clean. Um, they're actually quite pro quite pleasurable to listen to in their style. Um, what I'll do now is I'll do a couple of sound clips for you guys to hear that they really have been cleaned up throughout the range. On a negative note, this is more down to the original design from Tanberg. They don't have the best driver integration in the world. They really don't. That mid-range circuit and that mid-range unit is probably an afterthought. I have had a quick chat with Matt, who did the crossover work at Hey Cross Audio, and he suspected possibly these started out as a two-way configuration. But asking that 12-inch unit to roll right up to meet an HF unit was pretty demanding. Uh, in a discussion we have, it seems like that 12 inch unit gets pretty out of control at about 700 hertz. You wouldn't want to go any higher than that. You wouldn't want to really have that big gap between that huge 12 inch unit going straight up to an HF unit, which is why they've come up with a design for a three-way system. In all honesty, the Ditton 44 from Celestian with a similar base unit, it's dedicated mid-range, open back mid-range and it's dedicated enclosure. With the HF2000 is a far better speaker. I absolutely loved it in 44s. They're incredibly musical and an absolute pleasure to listen to. These are not a million miles behind that and they have tonal characteristics that are actually slightly different to the Ditton 44s. I think they're probably a little bit more punchy in the bass, perhaps not quite as woolly in the bass. Certainly tighter and more punchy than a Ditton 66, but nowhere near as deep. Ditton 66s really can rumble down into the low frequencies, so play some deep organ music on 66s and you'll be laughing your head off. You'll also probably be uh, annoying the neighbours and uh, rattling your windows. Anyway, that's enough waffle from me. All I really need to say now is a massive thank you to Matt Casey at Haycross Audio for agreeing to do this crossover video and do his work on the crossovers, which... I'm absolutely over the moon with he's done a fantastic job on those. Um, capacitors seem to be in, in high demand or in short supply at the minute because I and Matt had difficulty getting some of these crossovers, uh, sorry, capacitors, and or they were very delayed coming to us. So I'm, I'm not really sure what's going on there. But he did fantastic work to those. I'm really grateful for him doing those and for doing the two videos he did on the crossovers. Like I said, I'll link the third crossover video, actually I'll link both of his videos in the comments so you can follow this story all the way through. So part one on my channel is the introduction of these loudspeakers. Part two and three is Matt working on the crossovers and identifying the faults. Part four is me waffling now about the completed article. In all honesty, if I had a bit more time, there's a few things I would do. I would probably paint the chassis black on the Celestian bass drivers, they'll blend into the 
baffle board. I would probably recover the grill cloths as well. I would possibly consider changing that mid-range unit. And now I've really got to go and find another matched pair of tweeters just so they are 100% right. I'm not really happy with that little repair on that tweeter. It doesn't affect it in, in terms of sound reproduction. They sound fine, but it's just not neat enough for me. Anyway, that's an eight minute waffle. I shall play a track. You guys can hear what you think. Take care and I'll catch up with you soon.